because it looks so sick on camera though. <laughs> I'm gonna push this one. Alright, see a drop. Boom. Wow. What is going on everyone? We are back at Driven today, working on the FRS turbo case swap again. Now today, as we are waiting for a lot of the parts to arrive from K-Power, from Steam's Legit Garage, to do the powertrain of, of the swap, we're actually gonna be doing a little bit of suspension modification to correct for some of the geometry changes that we made when we lower the car, um, but as well to help with reliability. Now, that's kind of a weird concept, right? Making suspension changes for reliability. However, if you know 86s, you'll know that if you track them often enough, they are very prone to snapping axles. And in this video, we're actually gonna be raising the rear subframe of the car to account for lowering the suspension. And I'll kind of detail why this makes a difference and how this can actually save you a lot of mechanical troubles, uh, save you some toes off of the track. Uh, but it is a bit of an involved process and a bit of an involved change. All right, so if we take a look at the underside of the FRS, here is where the subframe is mounting to the body of the car. And you'll see that there's actually a bit of space that is taken up by bushings at the top. And we can also see at the front mount how there's that little bit of a gap at the top that's being taken up. Now what we're gonna do today is drop the subframe, press out the old OE bushings, which are rubber, and we are actually gonna press in solid bushings. Solid bushings, probably not something that you wanna do if you're still driving the car on the street. It's going to take up a lot of the slack, obviously, and create a lot of noise, vibration, harshness, and put a little bit more strain on your, your suspension. Basically, the only parts are gonna move at that point, right? Uh, but it is a available option in the aftermarket to help us raise our subframe to correct for that geometry. And just so that we're all clear, this driver side inner CV is usually the one that always breaks. And it's always the bearing cage inside here. And you see part of the reason why is when we lower the car, the angle of the shaft is going to get more and more severe as this part of the suspension has to move upward to lower the vehicle, right? And so the angle and we see that, you know, this is the flex CV, right? The angle that it attaches to the diff is gonna be like this. And that contact point is gonna put a lot of stress because it's not straight, it's elongated. And the surface area for the contact in the bearing cage, I believe gets more and more strained. Comes prone to cracking. I just love looking at these pretty suspension bits. KW, Club Sport X, Race Comp Engineering, Tarmac 3s, the feeling of these adjusters. Man, it's so good. If you wanted to take the geometry correction and uh, making the axles straighten out even further to the extreme, the other thing you could do is actually modify the rubber or poly mounts for the differential carrier itself to go even higher. But the issue with that is one, the diff will probably hit the bottom of the trunk and so you have to bring out the big hammer to, to bash that in and the other issue is actually the axle is going to start hitting this part of the subframe right up here so people have to actually cut this and box it in if you wanted to do both the subframe riser kit as well as the diff riser kit it's really hard to see what I'm talking about on the car itself, so I put together a really quick diagram and you just have to look at my chicken scratch to try and understand it. So let's imagine this is your diff carrier here, inner CV on both sides, the mid shaft for your axles, your suspension, and your tires. So in an OEM setup, your axles are basically parallel, close to parallel to the ground. And what's going to happen is when you lower your car, this gets shortened, your suspension, so that your tires are probably gonna be closer to up here on both sides, which means that this mid shaft for the axle and the outer CV is gonna move up as well. So then your axle shafts are actually gonna be angled like this, which means there's a lot of tension or a lot of strain being put on these inner CVs here because of that angle of attachment. And you know, this is basically A, B, C, A squared, B squared equals C squared, you know, good old Pythagoras. This is actually being stretched as well. 
And now the OEM axles, they have a little bit of uh, in compression and expansion that they can deal with, but again, it all puts a lot of strain onto this inner CV. And especially if you're taking a really hard, let's call it a really hard right-hander where this side of the suspension is being loaded up like crazy, that is just gonna get more and more and more strain until it can't take any more torque and it will crack. Want to burn or do we press? Definitely more time consuming if you were to break it. I mean, if you were to like press it out. Whereas if you burn it, you just burn it. It just falls out. And then you just like take like an air hammer or air chisel. And you just chisel this in and it just comes out. It's pretty okay. simple. Most efficient. It's just that like burning it is a little messy. That's yeah. the only thing. So it's got its pros and cons. So I think what we're going to do to try and make this as efficient as possible is to bust out the torch and burn the rubber bushings out. So that a fairly painless way of trying to do this instead of trying to press it out. Uh, so in terms of the bushings, you see it is the four here, so the ones on the front. You see the OEM ones, that, they're basically like dimpled to give it a little bit more tolerance when the... Uh, the washer is on top, so it just gives it a little bit more plush feeling, plush ride. And then we have the rear ones right here as well. So let's uh, be pyromaniacs and light it up. It's a different kind of barbecue, huh? It does look so sick on camera though. <laughs> I'm sure there's a better way to do this than there is, but this is the more entertaining way to do it. I feel like everyone online just resorts to doing this. They get frustrated with hacking at it or whatnot, yeah. but... Kind of smells like ramen. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you just pick up? Brand new motor. Yeah. It's actually crazy how small they are. It's like, nice. I can't believe it fits in a box like that. It's just a short block, right? Just a short block. Fancy. Just it's just fancy OEM. Build. What do you mean? Look, it's from Subaru. It's got oh, it's just OEM, right? Yeah, Subaru? It's OEM. No, Subaru? No, 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 Bar no, no, Barn Bill OEM? Yeah, yeah. OEM Plus, right? <laughs> That's it. That's all we need. How much power do you think it's going to make? What are we going for? 600? No. 600? <laughs> <laughs> no. We're going to be consistent. Hopefully, 455 if we can. Yeah. Get the wheels. That would be nice. Should be good. Should be yeah. a fun car. A street car, track car. Should be good. It's warming up the place. I can tell you right now. Huh? It's warming up the place. Yeah, it is. It's nice. It's, nice. <laughs> it's nice that there's like enough oil inside this rubber just to keep it burning like that, eh? Yeah. Yeah, every, everyone's crowding around the fire now. This is what happens. Need marshmallows. Yeah. Yeah. Need marshmallows. It's a nice campfire, right? Alright, pull it up. Dang. It's like a burnt marshmallow. We That's actually kind of sick. <laughs> Jeez. We'll just let that burn until the rubber's like gone. Yeah, it, 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 that's pretty, quick, right? It's pretty crazy how much of a fuel source it is. Like it just yeah. now I understand like when a car is on the side of the road and it's like on fire, it's gonna it's gonna flame for a while. There's a like bit. so much of this stuff in there. I think I'm gonna push this one. Alright. See it drop. Boom. Wow. That was pretty quick. It was quick, right? I don't think that's just two minutes. What's like going on? This will be a pretty good thumbnail, just like this. It's just like the subframe just like burning in the background. Yeah, it's like, what is... <laughs> How many of these jobs have you done before like this? On this chassis? Yeah. yeah. Probably my sixth one. Okay. In the last six years, seven years. That's a decent number. Yeah. All track cars or drifters? All track cars. Yeah. Or just for the correction or they wanted just more stiffness? It's mainly... So like not a lot of people think about the correction. It's mainly just like um, they don't want the drive chain flex. Yeah. Especially like this bushing here. It's when you're like when you're pulling a lot of G's, it does move around. Yeah, it deflects. Though I think sometimes, honestly, like having a little bit of deflection gives you 
bit more grip. That's the thing that people go overboard with, is that they take out all the deflection, mm -hmm. and it becomes too stiff. Driven one, all yeah. solid. Yeah. Feels insane. Yeah. Yeah, because like, the throttle response to it gets like, the way it puts power down, it's a lot sharper. Mm. Just because there's like no give, right? So everything just gets transferred. Yeah. So where are all the bushings you do? So it's a rear upper control arm bushings, right? Yeah. Is that a ball joint there too that gets replaced? No, no, this can stay. It's a ball joint, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, and then you already have all your SPL stuff. Yep. So that's all already changed. And then maybe just poly diff mounts, yeah? Yeah, if you don't want the noise. Because if you do solid, you'll hear a lot of whining. Yeah. A lot yeah. more solid. I, I, ha I literally, I have the part shop max ones. Like, uh, they're in the trunk right now, but I'm just like... I don't want to commit to cutting the suffering right yeah, now. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's too much. So while Enrique is cooking back there, kind of explain the rationale as to why I decided to go in this direction with just the subframe bushings and risers for now. A lot of people, when it comes to dealing with the axle snapping issue, they'll just throw in like, you know, 800 horsepower, 1,000 horsepower rated axles, right, in there. And they find that they actually start snapping them around 400 horsepower. And that's mostly because of what we talked about earlier is that that angle just puts so much stress on the bearing cage on the inside CV that no matter how strong the axles are, uh, you're probably going to have issues with it, especially when you're taking like a right-hander really hard or a left-hander really hard. And shifting, that torque shock is just going to send uh, a lot of, of um, power, spiky power to, to the drive line and to that axle that it ends up just, just cracking. So the things that you can do, what we're doing, the uh, subframe risers, you can also do the diff risers, right? So if you do the diff risers, you would be replacing those and raising a diff. The issue with that is, as we discussed, the diff casing will hit the bottom of the trunk, um, as well as you will need to clearance this part of the subframe because the axle body is now so much higher, it's actually oh, going to rub there. there. Oh, I'm, I'm doing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, where's, with this? I yeah, just, just push it down. Okay, here we go. We're just open it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you, did you like put it through the hole? Yeah, I put it in the hole. And... Yeah. Wow. Oh. That is... That's pretty cool. That's Still flaming. Is... Nah, this one, Ugh, she needs a little more time. She's a, she's, a, she's a little underdone over here. One of the things that needs to be manually removed is a metal race around the OE bushing. So Enrique is just cutting that out now. Loud. Cutting that out now, we'll fold it in. When we put in the SPL one, it takes up all that space and doesn't need that to be there anymore. All right, so this is what the metal race looks like after air hammering it out. I gotta be honest with you, this would not be a fun job to do with just hand tools. I don't even know how you would be able to get it out. Even with the air tool, it took about a good five, 10 minutes to get this piece out. Almost another half an inch, and she's there. It's because it's cold. We freeze it. Yo, that's pretty much it, huh? And that's what it looks like. Nicely hammered in. <laughs> All right, so this bushing has now been sledged in and it is nice and flush. I think we're gonna call it there for this video. We did pretty good progress. I mean, I should say Enrique and Matt made some pretty good progress. I just helped with the disassembly of the subframe. Um, but um, as you can see, we've got one of them pressed in as a proof of concept and it is valid. So the way that these actually uh, raise your subframe is as you can see, they're essentially flush at the top whereas before it was about you know a third of an inch to half an inch taller and what you do to take up that space is you just add shims to the bottom here so that it takes up 
the right amount of space for the bolt. Now you see what it looks like with the race removed. So this is another spot that the guys have been working on. So it's been cleaned out and punched through. And here are ones that have been torched, but uh, I'm not gonna touch it because it's gonna be so dirty. But you can see that uh, we still have to remove the, well, the remaining rubber as well as the metal race uh, around the outside, which again, proves to be pretty difficult with just hand tools, but we're using an air chisel to get that out. But that for tonight, I'm gonna be joining up with Jason Lee and some of the other guys from Ontario Time Talk for dinner tonight. And uh, who knows what will happen.